welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and what is apparently an absolutely brilliant puzzle today. This is called This Sums to Eleven. I'm not sure if that is a Spinal Tap reference. Uh, and it's by Blobs with a Z. Um, and apparently this is absolutely gorgeous and approachable, um, despite the fact there are no given digits in this, in this grid. And it's got a very nice rule set and I'm looking forward mightily to give it a go. Um, I will read the rules of this one in just a moment or two. Uh, I think I've got two things to mention first and let me start with a huge thank you. Um, the channel somehow, some way, is closing in on 500,000 subscribers. These, oh, this is a number that is so extraordinary, I have difficulty sort of comprehending it seriously. Um, when we started the channel back in 2017, we fought tooth and nail. It took us forever to get to a thousand subscribers. Um, I used to get an email every time we got a new subscriber and some days you wouldn't get any new subscribers. So to be closing in on 500,000, it just feels to us to be so extraordinary. Um, so if you're one of those subscribers, thank you so much. Um, and we've been talking about what we want to do to sort of say thank you. We have a couple of ideas, which is what I'm going to talk about now. The first is that we do have some copies of our book left. Now, the book was a, a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, it's called Our Greatest Hits. It contains amazing puzzles. Let me try and show you. I'm not sure I'll be able to do this on the webcam. There's Sudoku hunts in there. There's even a bit of biographical information. Um, although I couldn't find, I just was looking for it now, the most famous thing about Mark, which is of course that he starred in Bridget Jones' Diary, the film. I know you're all saying, but well, I don't remember Mark in it. If you look carefully, you will find, you will definitely find Mark um, in one of the scenes. And um, yeah, I think he made the film, frankly. But anyway, that, that, that book, um, uh, we have some copies left and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, basically make it available at a discount so there's a coupon under this video if you go into the video description five dollars off the book um, for as many books as we've got left so they are they are not in unlimited supply so if you've always thought oh i would like the book and you have ne not had a chance to get it now is a really good time to get get your hands on one uh, and we really hope you enjoy it now the second thing we're going to do is we are going to release a free, completely free app that contains puzzles by some of the great and the good of the Sudoku community. So this is something we've been working on for a little while, um, but when we hit 500,000 subscribers, there's gonna be a free app um, and um, yeah, it's gonna have puzzles like by Fistimabel, it's gonna have puzzles by Kodak, it's gonna have puzzles by Sam Kappelman Lines, Clover, Jovial, to name but a few. Um, so it's really exciting. And um, yeah, it's just from us to say thank you to you um, for helping us build what is, we think, one of the most positive parts of the internet. Um, the Sudoku community is quite remarkable. It's full of so many clever and kind people, and we are really proud of it. So. Uh, from us to you, thank you, and look out for the app. And if you're not subscribed and you want a free app, you know what to do. Um, now, the next thing I need to do is to say happy birthday to Ben Clamphorn. Ben, I think you're turning 37 today. I hope I've got that right. We had a lovely email from your wife, Laura, um, who amused us by saying that uh, you as a family enjoy watching our Wordle in a minute videos. Um, I know most of you will be familiar with those, but basically every day uh, Mark tries to solve Wordle in hard mode in under a minute. Now, if you've not tried Wordle on hard mode, what that means is if you get any greens or oranges in a guess, you have to use that information in your next guess. You can't just sort of do do trickery like Siren Octal Dumpy as your first three uh, first three guesses, that won't work. Um, so anyway, those, those videos are on the channel, obviously they're also on things like Instagram. Um, but we are amused to find the Clamphorn family basically do Wordle yeah, as a competition between themselves, using the video, I think, as a, as a solution guide thereafter. Uh, something everyone should do. Every family should be involved in a Wordle competition. I think it would make the world a better place. Um, but anyway, Ben, we hope you have a brilliant birthday today, and I hope you have lots of cake. Um, now, all that said and done, let me read you the rules of Blobs's puzzle. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Adjacent digits along a green line must differ by at least five. 
uh, the digits in each cage sum to 11, and all such dominoes are shown, i.e. it is not possible for a domino to contain digits summing to 11 in this puzzle unless they are in a cage. So what that means is uh, these two cells clearly sum to 11 because they're caged. Those two sum to 11. Those two sum to 11. Those two cannot add up to 11. These two cannot add up to 11 because they're not caged. So every single instance of two digits in a domino adding to 11 is apparently shown in this puzzle. And as for the green lines, how do they work? Well, this is a so-called German whispers constraint. Many of you will be familiar with it. And what that means is, let's make that digit 2 then the next digit along has to be at least five different from two. So it's going to have to be a seven, an eight, or a nine. Let's imagine it's a nine. Oh, no, it can't be a nine because that's going to break the cage. Let me make it an eight then. Uh, if this is an eight, that's going to have to be a three because it has to be five different from eight. And it also has to look be in a domino that adds up to 11. And then this would have to be five different from three and it can't be eight so it would have to be nine and then that could be uh, four or one and that's how german whispers lines work do have a go at the puzzle the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking glasses are adjusted heat is incredible it is absolutely boiling here in the uk um, today and we shall start with a secret now, the secret is something I only tell my favourite people, but I'm going to tell it to you because if you've watched this video to this point, you'd certainly deserve to know it. And also, it will give us a digit look in this, in this box. Let's make that box blue. Um, now, the secret is that the digits 1 to 9 add up to 45. Now, by the rules of Sudoku, we know that this, the blue cells add up to 45 because that's a complete box of a Sudoku. But the instructions in this puzzle tell us that each of these little cages contains digits summing to 11. So this, those eight digits there must add up to 11 times four, which is 44. But if we know all the blue squares together add up to 45, the middle digit is, you've guessed it, a one. Um, and that is an immediate digit, which is very kind in, of blobs indeed. Now, I'm wondering actually now if that means we're meant to hunt for ones in this grid, because of course a one can never go in one of these cages, uh, which I suppose would have been another way of seeing that one must go in the middle cell of the grid. One can't go in a cage because if you try and put a one in it, this digit's going to have to be a 10 and that will definitely break the rules of Sudoku. So and we know that's a one. Hang on. Don't 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 lose the digits you've already earned. Um, right. OK, so that's well, there's a little bit. There's some interesting symmetry I'm noticing now. Look at the cages in this uh, in this box four and the cages in this box too. And then if we rotate that pattern another 90 degrees, the cages in box six and another 90 degrees, the cages in box eight. And we have exactly the same pattern in each of these boxes. Now, I don't know what to do with that other than to note it and to note that if we did find out some logic about well, either the ones or or what the nature of the purple was, we might be able to apply that logic symmetrically in each of the four boxes because there's going to be a lot of similarities. I mean, it doesn't actually look very useful immediately because we can see that the ones in box four have to be in those cells, in box two have to be in those, in box six in those, and in box eight in those, which I don't think takes us forward at all. So perhaps... I'm just wondering if I'm meant to be looking at the German whispers. There are secrets about German whispers lines, which I should probably run through quickly. What are the, there are two secrets about the German whispers lines. The first and the most important is that you can never put a five on the line. And that's because if you do try and put a five on the line, the next digit becomes problematic. Because what are we going to put in this cell? We have to put a digit in that's five different, at least from five. Well, if we go downwards, we're going to get to zero or negative numbers. And if we go upwards, we're getting to 10 
or 11 or higher numbers, all of which can't go in at Sudoku. So the first thing you can say about a German whispers line is it cannot have a 5 on it. And that leads to something we call the oscillating polarity principle, which is definitely a homage to the Big Brother theory. Uh, sorry, the Big Brother theory? The Big Bang theory. What am I talking about is the heat. Um, the Big Bang theory, which is probably my favourite programme on TV at the moment. I mean, I'm catching up. I came to Big Bang Theory late. I'm catching up on Netflix. Anyway, what does it mean? Well, if that digit, let's say that digit was a 1, 2, 3 or 4. What's this digit then? Uh, and the thing to realise is because this digit can't be a 5, you have to flip the other side of the 5 when in selecting this digit. So even if this is a 1, because this digit has to be 5 different at least, it must flip the other side of the 5. So it's going to be a high number. Well, what's this digit then? Well, then it flicks back under 5, so this is going to be a low digit again. So you get this oscillation along the line um, between low and high numbers. So one of the things with a puzzle like this that we're going to have to do at some point is to work out whether those three digits, which are all the same polarity, are high or low. And same, one, two, three, and same there, look, those three digits are the same polarity. But I don't see actually a way of telling much about these numbers in isolation. I don't think we can say anything at all. So it must be, it must actually just be to do with the dominoes, which makes me think it's a colouring puzzle, which is a bit weird. Because how is that going to work? Um, I love the fact that a puzzle like this is two stars out of five for difficulty and it's not immediately obvious how you're meant to solve it. I mean I can see that these four dominoes here have to be the four ways of making 11. There are four ways of making 11 in two digits using Sudoku numbers. So 2, 9, 3, 8, 4, 7, 5, 6 and each of those must be represented in box 5. Let's colour them in for a moment. Um, green blue. Mm. These are the decisions that, that I, I worry about. Like that will go grey and orange. Now, yeah, see this is a, this is immediately not terribly obvious what to do. I mean I can see that these cells now, if we look at this domino, this can't be a blue domino because if it was a blue, let's say blue was five and six, if this was a 5, 6, this digit would be impossible. So that digit, I can see, is, is either grey or green. And the same is true of that. But I don't think we know... I don't think we can do better than that. So those digits are going to have to be blue or orange. Uh, one of which is on a whisper line, but we don't know how big it is, so it's pointless. <laughs> Um, right, okay, though, that digit, I know the colour of that digit. Ah. Oh, that's weird and clever and cunning. Right, I like that. Okay, what's that digit? Now, because it's because there's a blue and orange domino in row five, it's not blue or orange. Now, look, if that was a green digit, that domino would add up to 11. And you can see that. I mean, let's make that 4 and 7. Well, if this is green, it can't be 4 because that's already in the row. So it has to be 7. And that domino adds up to 11, which is not allowed because this is not, they're not both in a cage. So that tells us that this digit is grey, I suppose. It must be, it's not blue, it's not orange, it's not green, which means that digit is green. which means that, oh, I see, I do this, I can do it, yes, and let's use the symmetry. So this digit and this digit must have that exact same principle applying. This digit can't be grey, it can't be green, and it can't be blue, because that domino would then add up to 11. So it is orange, and therefore that digit is blue. Which... 
I'm sure is very important for a reason I'm about to explain, but I haven't quite worked out yet. Okay, no, I can do it. I can do it. That is, that is lovely. It's absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, so I want to look at this cell. Now, what's this cell? This is just, this is almost comedy. It's so, it's funny. What is this cell? We actually know what it is because it's not orange. It sees orange. It cannot be green because if it was green, that domino would add up to 11. And it cannot be gray because if it's gray, that domino would add up to 11. So the negative, so this sort of negative constraint that's applying tells us that the only color that can be is blue, which means that that's blue. So we've got double blue in row seven. And if this is blue, this domino can't be blue and must be orange. So that domino must be blue. And that digit has a symmetrical counterpart here. So that, yes, yeah, so that, uh, does that work or not? I feel like it ought to, it can't, well, it can't be. Um, hang on. Have I gone mad? That's the question I'm now asking myself. Have I gone mad? How did I know what that was? Oh, because it saw orange in the row. That's what I'm missing. Okay, I haven't gone mad. Oh, that's a relief. Yes, okay, so let's come to this digit because that digit does benefit from greens being in its column, which somehow I wasn't seeing. So that square must be gray because if it was orange, that domino would be orange. If, if it's blue, that domino is blue and it can't be green. So it's gray, which makes that green. It makes this gray and it makes that gray. And what's, oh, actually, what's this one now? Yes, and this one's blue, because if that's orange, that domino adds up to orange and it should be caged, and it can't be gray and it can't be green. So that's blue, that's blue, and that this must work the same way here. Look, we've got to keep this from being gray, and the only other thing it can be is green. So this is gonna go all around the grid. So now we should try this digit, which can't be blue, it can't be green, or that domino would add to 11, and it can't be gray because that domino would add to 11. This is just lovely. That's orange, so that's orange. Now we can do this one, which can't be orange, blue, or green, so this is gray. Now we can do this one, which can't be gray, or blue, or orange. Oh, yes, it can be green. Suddenly worried that I messed it up there. So that can be green. This one can't be green, blue, or gray now, so that's orange. And we've got a very pretty pattern in the grid. And we've got four, we've got the sort of, yeah, we've got the sort of the edges of the Catherine wheel to fill in. Um, now, can we get those though? Oh, and look, this one would be interesting because that's on a German whispers line. So somehow, some way, we need to be able to find these Catherine wheel digits, don't we? Well, let's look at this square. That square definitely can't be gray or blue. Um, so it is, and it, no, it can't be green because if that's a do green domino, this cell's got no value. So that is orange. And if we can get this one, we can get all of them. So this cell can't be orange can't um can't be blue can't be gray so that's got to be green this one can't be orange or gray or green so that's blue and this one can't be orange green or blue so it's gray and we have got the four colors which is what you'd expect in the wings of the catherine wheel but but how do how does this actually help us? <laughs> this is weird. Um, I don't know how we're going to get this going. Maybe I can color. Maybe I can. Oh yes, okay. I can color this cell on the whispers line. Look, that can't be blue. It can't be grey because that would be a grey, and it can't be orange because that would be an orange eleven. So that cell is green. This cell can't be gray, 
that would be 11 and 11 it can't be green that's oh I've broken it oh no <laughs> I'm so sorry I've made a mistake because this cell I don't think this cell can be colored at all that oh, I don't believe what did I do wrong because this the problem is this cell it can't be gray because that's going to add up to 11 it can't be green it can't be blue because there's already double blue in the box and it can't be orange so I've made an error here oh uh, no I haven't made an error no 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 right I've gone from zero to hero again um, well for once the reason is that cell can be one. Oh, for goodness sake Simon yeah this has got to be a one because it, ca it cannot be a colour that's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. This is the sort of puzzle I love for this channel because it is, it's really, really interesting. And yet it's not mind-bendingly complicated. And it has moments like this in it where you just think, oh, that's so lovely. So this, this being one tells us the nature of the whisper because now by the oscillating polarity principle, that has to be low. So that's got to be two, three or four. It can't be four because that would be surrounded by double nine on the, on the, um, on the whisper line because you need a digit that's five away from four and there is only one of those digits. So these digits are high. You can't use six because six would have to be surrounded by double one. Um, so oh, if that's two or three, uh, is that in some way insightful? Well, yes, it is because seven plus two or three doesn't add up to 11. So this is a two, three and an eight, nine in orange. And that square is low, but could be a one. Now, what we must have to do now, though, is to keep colouring because I can see we can we can completely colour box two now. We need to put another orange in it and it can't go there. So that's orange and therefore that is grey. Now, this cell must be colourable because that's not able. That's blue because it's we need a second blue in the column. Now we need oh, little this is lovely. This is lovely. You need a green in box eight and it can't go next to the other green or it would create an 11 domino so it must go there and that tells us where the one goes so now in this row i still need greens and oranges um greens this is a green orange pair hang on let me just think about this can we disambiguate that the answer might be no um Hmm, I think there's a way of doing that, but I can't see what it is. Okay, let's try column three. I need another, oh yeah, that's lovely. I need another orange. I've only got one orange in column three. I can't put it here, so it must go at the bottom, which means that top cell has to be the one, which means this is not a one anymore. Um... That feels like it might matter, doesn't it? Has that told me anything about the world? I Oh, I know, I know something about the world. Where does grey go? There must be another grey in row seven. It can't go next to its friend. It can't go here, it will be, or it will be next to its friend. So grey hides in this cell. And now we need an orange. So that could be orange. Oh, could that be orange? If that was orange that would have to be green hmm maybe i don't know okay so in this row we need to put a one somewhere and we need to put an orange somewhere i don't know how to, i don't even know how to pencil mark that it's sort of a one orange pair so I'll grey flash it to indicate that I don't know which of those it is. Right. Now we will, now I can place the second green in box six because it can't go in row four. Look, so that must be green. I need another orange in this box. It can't go next to its friend. So that's orange. That Oh, this is it. So that's a one. That means this cannot be a one. Therefore, we know by 
the weird pair we just found. That's orange. So that means this is a one over here in box seven, which means that this is a one in box four. And I need to put a one into box three and a one into box nine. And that's all the ones done. So now what we should be able to do is completely color the rest of the grid. So yes, I can get the, I can get the last blue in box four using the double blue here. So that must be gray. Um, so those are both colorable. Uh, what do we need in row three? We need a blue and a green. And we can't put the green next to its friend. So that's blue. That's green. So this can't now be green because it would be next to a green. Um, may, actually, let's have a look at column two because if I could get this digit, maybe it would help. Because at least that's a whispered digit. Uh, I need to put blue in and I need to put green in. Oh. So those two squares, I think, are a blue-green pair. And I'm sure there's a way <laughs> that we can tell. Well, actually, and I've got a one on this whispers line. So this whispers line's polarity is determined. This must be a low digit. So that's got to be two, three, or four. Which means that digit has got to be seven, eight, or nine. And you can't put four here. This is clever, actually. Oh, the, this this is more than clever. This is brilliant. Look, this square can't be a four because you'd have to put two nines in box seven. And if it can't be a four, I've now got a two, three pair in this column. So that's a four at the top of the grid. I don't know its color yet, but it must be next to nine, which means that we find we've got we've we've worked out what orange is. Orange is eight and three out of absolutely nowhere. And gray can't be eight now. So gray must be nine and two. So now I can do some, I can do some orangeification of the grid. Yes, that's got to be a three because it's orange and it's not eight. Oh, my orangeification has gone, has sort of come a cropper very quickly. Ah, but this digit is a nine. And so that must be gray, which means that this box, oh, I see, I've got blue and green. This is a blue-green pair at the top, but I don't think I know which is which. That can be eight. I know there's an eight in one of those two cells. Okay, so these two squares are a three-eight pair because they're orange. In fact, maybe that's what I should do. Label up all the oranges in the grid with three and eight. And can I do something then to disambiguate them? This, yes, I can, of course. I've got one on the whisper. That's oh, lovely. That's going to do the rest of the oranges. This is a class puzzle. So this has got to be high, six, seven, or nine. It's blue, so it's it's not nine, because we know gray is nine. So it's six or seven going with four or five. Uh, but that could be blue, I suppose. Now let's just let's see if the orangeification is now all resolved. It probably is. That's got to be three. So three can only go here now in box nine, which gives us the three and the eight. We need to put an eight in one of those two cells. And maybe, maybe it's that whispers line that will do it. Or it could be the fact that we know the polarity of this one. So those two digits are high. And so these are from six, seven and eight. And that can't be eight. So green is six or seven. Did we already know that? I think we might have done if I'd thought about it. And that cell, which could be orange or green. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. Right, what's that digit? And the answer is it cannot be green, because if it was green, it would have to be the counterpart to this digit, which already appears. So if we think about the green domino, it's going to consist of a high digit, a six, seven, eight, nine, and a low digit. And the, the, the polarity of this forces this now to be orange. It must be an orange eight. Um, that is presumably, oh no, it doesn't actually. I thought that was going to tell me the nature of all of the digits. But no, it doesn't seem to. 
So I've got another blue green domino at the bottom. So now in this row, I've got I can see I've got double R. I need to put another gray in. I don't know where it goes. This is a gray eight combination. Um, ah, but that's no longer able to be orange, is it? So that's got to be green, which we know is uh, this is the low green. It's the low green digit. Oh, it's done. This does it. This, the counterpart to green, that's green is six or seven, is a five if, if green is six. Well, we can't put five on the whisper. So that's got to be four, which means that, and because four can only go with nine on a whisper, because it's got, we need a digit five away, that therefore forces this to be nine, which is gray and puts eight in the corner, which should get a song because that's so absolutely beautiful. Um, but I don't know a song about eight in the corner, only about threes in the corner. I don't seem to have that. Um, so now I know green is four, which means green is seven as well. Therefore, that's seven. That's four. That's seven. That's seven. That's four. That's four. That's seven. That's seven. That's four. That therefore is seven. And that therefore is green, which puts blue in the corner. And blue is blue six and five, isn't it? Yeah, gray is two. That's nine. Oops, that's two. Uh, that's two, that's nine, that's two. And two has to go here by Sudoku, which is gray. Nine has to go here by Sudoku, which is also gray. So this, that's blue is six and five, isn't it? because I've not put any blues in. So blue is six and five. We can do some of these at least. This is now five. We need a second blue in this column. That must be the second blue in that box, which means we get five, six, six, five, six, five, six. That can't be blue anymore. There'd be too many blues in this column. So that's the four. That's blue and is a five. Five, six, five, five, six. Um, nines and twos, yes, we can keep going with nines and twos. Nines and twos can go in, twos and nines can go in. I think the puzzle is basically finished. Fours and sevens can go in, fours and sevens could go in. And that is how to solve a quite brilliant puzzle. Let me just, I'm just staring at it to see if I've actually done all the coloring correctly, which I may have messed up, but let's click tick. Yay. That is stunning. That is absolutely stunning, Blobs. I loved that. It's it's actually, it's, it's a, just a perfect puzzle. It's just a perfect puzzle because it isn't that easy to start. I, I just dispute it. If people are going to say, maybe the comments will be filled with people who say, oh, I just immediately coloured in everything. It was completely obvious what I had to do. But it wasn't obvious to me and I'm, I was surprised it was the negative constraint that was the, the thing that sort of tipped it over. But the way you could basically colour the whole thing in and then, then find the ones, then use the whispers to get all of that logic around the exact sizes of the 11s in each case. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. One of the, one of the well, we, we're in an absolute purple period of puzzles at the moment. Um, but it certainly it, it holds its head up high in that company. Um, what's that quote from the Return of the King in whose I now will not be ashamed uh, to share the halls or something of the mighty ancestors in whose company I shall not now need to bow my head or something. I don't know. You know who I mean. Um, and <laughs> but I'll stop being a nerd. Someone accused me of being a nerd the other day. I took it as a great compliment. But anyway, that was wonderful. Let me know in the comments how you got on. Uh, I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.